Okay. Uh, I think we can start now. Uh, it's seven forty. So, okay. So again, uh, as previous class, we'll try to solve a couple of questions on, you know, advanced data structures. We'll try to see uh, some of the questions which are which were asked in, like, uh, like one of the big tech company, and then. I hope you guys can hear me clearly, loud and clear, right? Yeah, we can hear. Yes. Hello, am I audible to everyone? Yes. 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 Yeah, okay, you're cool. audible, but uh, your voice is a little low. Uh, okay, uh, is it better now? Previous. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah. Hello. Yes. 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 It's better now. Yes, it's better. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So yeah, uh, we'll be talking. We'll try to solve a couple of questions on you know data structures and algorithms, which are asked in one of the companies in big big tech companies. Okay. So one question. I mean, I got a request for one of the questions from someone, and uh, the other question, uh, uh, it's again a lead code question, which is asked in one of the big companies. Uh, so sorry, let's start with the lead code. Are you sharing something? No, I haven't shared my screen okay. yet. I'll, I'll be sharing now. Yeah, so one uh, request uh, to everyone that please, please stay on mute if you don't have any questions. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask your doubts, uh, like if, you're, if you have one. Okay, uh, for, the, for the rest of, rest of the time, I would suggest everyone to please remain on mute. Cool, so I'll start sharing my screen now. And yeah, I think you can see my screen. Right. Yeah. So it's a very, very famous question and like asked in like a lot of interviews where you need to figure out whether the given Sudoku is a valid Sudoku or not. Uh, it's a nine cross nine Sudoku board where the numbers are uh, from one to nine. And if, if you'll see, there are nine boxes. So you can see my screen, right? So if you'll see here, there are nine boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, separated by a dark line. And then there are nine rows and nine columns. Now the condition of the Sudoku is that each box should have the unique numbers from one to nine. Each row should have unique numbers from one to nine and each column should have unique numbers from one to nine. The question is that basically you need to tell whether the so the Sudoku is not completely filled. It is filled with few of the numbers. And what you need to return is whether this Sudoku is a valid Sudoku or not. We don't need to, so uh, yeah, just one thing uh, to notice here, we don't need to fill the Sudoku by the numbers. What we need to say is the Sudoku, which is in the current situation, is it a valid Sudoku or not as per the given conditions one, two, and three. So if you have any doubt in the question, please uh, ask. I'll give like a 30 seconds uh, to you people to ask any doubts if you have one. Otherwise, we'll proceed on to the solution for this. Are, are these uh, premium, lead code premium account questions? Sorry, can you please be a bit louder? Uh, are these lead code premium account questions? Yes, these are premium account questions. Okay. But I can share this question with you if you want. Uh, it should be fine. Shouldn't be a problem. I'll share it sure. on the chat. Okay. Cool. So, any other anyone has any other question related to uh, you know the question like understanding of the question? Okay. So, looks like there is no confusion in the question at least. Now, now I would like to listen from few people. How would you solve this particular problem? It's a it's a simple problem. You just need to you know, come up with a solution and how would you maintain it? I think most of you will be able to solve it very easily, but like, uh, let's see how, how exactly you'll approach this particular. Uh, these are the, these are some of the nodes. Uh, these are some of the nodes which you need to uh, take care of. So Sudoku board is partially filled, could be a valid, but is not necessarily solvable. But as I mentioned, we don't need to solve it. Only the filled cells have to be validated according to the mentioned rules. The board contains only one to nine and the characters dot. And the given board is of is all is always of size nine cross nine. Yeah. Hmm. 
we can pick one row okay uh, we can pick uh, each row and uh, verify uh, the uh -huh. is there any duplicates is there any duplicate okay. number available in that particular row if we okay. found any duplicate then we can reject that saying uh, so to okay. direct to the okay 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 that's just for the row you have mentioned right uh, do we just uh, need to check that yeah so we have around uh, nine rows so uh, in the loop we need to iterate each row and each row we can verify whether any duplicate is present in that or not if any of the row we found the duplicate we can reject it saying that it's not in that right. locally but let's say you are able to there are no duplicates present in the row then can you say for sure that it's a valid sudoku yeah we, what we can do is we can assume that maybe it will uh, lead to valid solution and we can try solve the next row and so try to understand this we don't need to solve this what we need to say at return is whether with the given field says says we need to validate according to the mention rule if the sudoku sudoku is valid sudoku or not yeah we need to verify column as well we don't need to solve okay okay is verifying column enough in this case uh, row and column row and column both we need to verify okay row what column is, as well as the my thinking yeah the individual nine cross nine boxes as well right because cross you could have boxes, a boxes not yeah, not the 9 cross 9 boxes yeah 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 3 cross 3 there are 9 boxes of 3 cross 3 so as per the condition each row should contains should contain the digits from 1 to 9 without repetition column should contain digits from 1 to 9 without repetition and each of 3 cross 3 boxes in this 9 cross 9 grid right there are sorry 9 boxes like that so you need to validate whether these three cross three boxes contains or doesn't contain any repetition if it contains any repetition then it's not a valid sudoku okay if it if it contains any repetition it's not a valid sudoku if it doesn't contain any repetitions it's a uh, it's a valid sudoku okay so uh, yeah now how you will check for yes please go ahead Uh, just wondering, could we have a two D array and then for every three cross three, you have a graph to check if you have. Just wondering. Do you really need to create a graph for this? I'm. Uh, can you explain me how you will create a graph? So for the rows and columns for every cell, you can check with the with with the two D array and to check if that three cross three box, uh, every three cross three is a single square, right? That only for those can you have a graph just connecting the three cross three to check if it is there in that particular square. got it but do you really really need to create a graph for this um i was just uh, uh, yeah maybe not it's a good it, it, it could be it could be a one of the possible solutions where you are creating a graph and like you'll have to check multiple preconditions and you need to make sure that you are checking all the conditions and i think i personally think that graph will be a overkill for this so okay. the way you are checking for the repetitions in the rows and columns can you do something similar for the uh uh for the boxes as well okay um, so first can anyone of you tell me how you will check whether the numbers are digits are repeated or not in a particular row let's go with one row is given to you you need to tell me whether any duplicates are present in this row or not how you will validate that Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break down the question into a very small part first. We'll try to understand that small part, and then on the top of it, we'll develop the complete solution. So my question is that there is a row single array given to you, and there can be a there can be a possible duplicates duplicate elements in that particular row. You need to tell me whether there exist any duplicates or not. How you will solve this particular problem? Use a set. Use a set. Okay. nice uh, anyone else yeah since it's say uh, i mean array of i mean we are having so many rows for every row we need a set so we need basically a array of set so how you will so if you will create a array of set how how you will check whether the uh, so what exactly will be your condition 
uh, yeah, so to return true or false yeah so we will be iterating through all the elements of the row uh, okay I mean, uh, wherever some value is present wherever some yes. value is present we will we will check if uh, that value is uh, i mean mm -hmm. if we are uh, we are trying to fill the box right so since, since we are trying to fill the box we will try to take some number and we will check whether that is present in the set or not available if it is present okay. in that case we cannot take that we should go to the next number so we should see again you are trying to make the you are trying to fill the sudoku i am not asking you to fill the sudoku you just need to validate the current sudoku so there is a difference so you don't need to return true or fa false after filling the sudoku what we need to do is only the filled cells need to be validated according to the mentioned rules that means that you have filled the cells you need to tell me whether this all the filled cells in the row are unique or not all the filled cells in the column are unique or not all the filled cells in the box are unique or not nothing more than that you don't need to fill the sudoku and validate it okay 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 yeah. understood my point yeah yes so now how you will use the set to determine if there is the 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 numbers which are present in the particular in a particular row are unique or not keep adding to the set right and uh, check if the number is already present because set you can al always check if the number okay. is al already present then you know that there is a duplicate and there is no need to have an array of uh, sets or something just reuse the same uh, set i mean just initialize it uh, again and again and for every row check i mean you can use the same set uh you can use the same set you are saying sounds good uh correct yeah this or this... like mm -hmm. uh, we can go for one kind of hash map where we can store these values as a key and yeah so we can validate that this value is present in that map or not if it is present already that means the duplicate got yes and how can you check for the boxes now Yeah, so we need current row. We can do minus one. Uh, I mean, we we need to go one step behind in the upward direction and one step behind in the uh, horizontal direction and one step forward. And that box, the enclosing box, three cross three box, that becomes. So that one we will be checking if there is anything in, in the set. Okay, I'll I'll give you a very very simple way to check this. so let's say this is one box correct so as someone mentioned we can use a set or we can use a hash map as well and we can keep the count i'll try to not optimize a lot on space right now because i want to keep it simple for everyone so what we can do is we can create an set for all the nine rows we can create a set sets for all the nine columns and we can create a set create sets for all the nine boxes even if you don't want to use sets you can very well very easily do it with the help of the array where array of int command where we will use the concept of hash array where each index will represent a number so zero we have 1 to 9 right so we will create an array of size 10 where 1 to 9 will represent each number and if that number is present in my row or not so to to explain you in a very simple way what you can do is let's say we just need to check for the rows first so what we'll do is we'll create an integer array of size 10 okay i'm trying to keep it very simple you can replace arrays with set and map i'm not sure how many of you will be comfortable with that that's why i'm using arrays if you want I, uh, we can use set or map as well here okay so let's start with the array first so what i've done is i've created an array of size 10 so that will represents my first row with 10 possible 1 to 9 because 1 to 9 are there and we are considering the values from 1 to 9 we are not considering 0 so that's why i have created an array of size 10 uh, to represent the number from 1 to 9 okay now how many such rows we'll have to create we'll have to create nine such rows right because there th this is an array of size uh this is uh sorry each array of size 10 will represent a particular row and we have nine similar rows or nine such rows so for each row we'll have to create one so what we'll do we'll create an array of size 9 cross 10 and can we call it as rows here 
okay it's very simple so what i will do is i'll cre i have created this intros uh okay and then similarly we can have int calls again this will represent my represent my what 9 cross 10 correct similarly int boxes we can have oh prakash why we are using sorry to interrupt why we are using 10 because it's 9 only right 1 to 9 yes but just to simplify because our values are from 1 to 9 right mm -hmm. so if you want to put the value mark that this particular uh, value is present like let's say 9 is present then what mm -hmm. you will do you will mark what we are storing is we are storing the count in that particular uh, at that particular index so let's okay. say 9 is appeared once right so or 5 is appeared once so on the first row and fifth index we will mark it as 1 now numbers are available from 1 to 9 but the array indexes are zero based index right so the mm -hmm. arrays are from 0 to something so if we'll yes. create a size array size of 9 then we'll have the numbers from 0 to 8 so unnecessarily we'll have to de deal with minus 1 everywhere that's mm -hmm. why just to keep it simplified i am using a size of 10 instead of 9 is that clear to you now yeah yeah thank you okay. this is similar to a bit array i mean you're trying to uh, use the concept of a bit it's array not a, it's not a bit array it's not, not at all a bit array, array. similar concept i mean you're trying to use it's it a as concept as of hash array where an array represent a particular hash and and in that hash each index represents a value, value. and what you are trying to keep is the count of that particular value and so value represents your counting, counting sort or something you are doing some similar thing right uh it's not a concept of bit bit many bit not is, not bit not bit i mean similar to concept of yeah, the similar count, concept of the counting count, sort yes, or whatever correct. the count word. sort yes correct correct something similar yes exactly so is it clear to everyone if any one of you has any doubt right now please ask otherwise i'll move forward so why we uh, why we decided uh, decided the array of uh, 9 comma 10 i mean 9 and 10 i mean because, because there are nine uh, rows okay okay let me explain you because there are nine rows and we need to check the uniqueness in each row correct mm -hmm. correct and for each row how many how many uh, cells we have for each row we have nine cells yes where the values are from 1 to 9 yes yes correct and each of the value represents the index in the array mm -hmm. correct so that's why we need to create a uh, if we create if we want to represent one particular lo, row then we'll have to create a array of size 10 is that clear to you is that part clear array of uh, size 10 okay Mm -hmm. Array of size ten, right? Because you have to represent all the number from one to nine. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Correct. That is clear, right? Now, how many such rows you have? I am having around nine rows. Not around. You have exact nine rows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nine. So that's so zeroth index of this row will represent. I mean, zero index of rows to the array will represent the zeroth row with yeah, yeah. these ten values. Correct. Yes. 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 Similarly, one one th index will represent this particular row. Similarly, nine nine th index will represent or eighth index will represent this particular row. That's why we have nine nine we have cross for uh, that index and ten is for values. Ten is for values. Correct. Mm -hmm. And same thing we'll have to do for columns as well. And same thing we'll have to do for boxes as well. Because how many boxes are there? There are nine boxes. and each yes. box can have 10 different the values from 1 to 9 mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. yeah is that clear now yes yes okay now let's move forward from here so we need to find out the size of the array correct so what we'll do is so okay so what how many so we know that it's a 9 cross 9 board that is very clearly given to you in the question that all the all the board size will be always 9 cross so what we'll do is for and i is equal to 0 i is less than 9 i plus plus so these this represent so basically with the help of this we'll iterate through the complete for and j is equal to 0 j is less than 9 and 
j plus plus. So with the help of this, we'll iterate through the complete rows and complete column given to us, correct? Or like the complete board given to us, correct? Now see. So int let's say row num is equal to i. This will represent my row, correct? This index i will represent my row. Is that clear to everyone? Do I agree or not? Yes. Yes. I will represent my row. Int call num will be equal to what? J. Do you agree? So yes. this will represent my column. Now we need to find find the box number. Now see to find the box number. So this is my zeroth box number. This is one, two. This is three, four, five. This is seven, eight, and nine. Oh sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eighth box number. This is eighth box number because we are doing zero based indexing. Now, how can you figure out this box number from the row and column given to you? So let's say you have one cross two. So one cross two is this cell. So if you are on this cell, how you will know that what is the row? What is the box number? So see, because the first three rows represents we are what first first box, second. Three rows, like next three rows, represents your second box present in the like like these boxes, and next three rows represent these boxes. Similarly, first three columns represent these boxes. Second three co uh, columns represent next three column represents these boxes, and next three columns uh, represent these boxes. So if I want one cross two, if I do one percent three, so row num. Percent three plus column percent three, then what it will give me? So see, this is my one cross two. So if I do one percent three plus two percent three, sorry, two by three, not one one percent. This will be by three. So one by three will be zero, and two by three will also be zero. So that means that this represents my zeroth box. Now let's come on to this part. So let's say this is my I need to figure out this box. So this is my row number zero and column number what? Zero, one, two, three, four. So fourth column number and zeroth row. So zero by three is zero plus four by three is one. So four by three is one. So this represents my first box. Similarly, let's try to calculate for this. So this is what? Which row number? This is sixth row number, right? Six, seven, eight. And what is the column number? Column number is seven. Correct. So six cross seven. So six by three is what? Two six by three is two plus six by three is two plus. Now what we have to do is every time. So each of this. So once you figure out the row number, we need to multiply it by three as well, right? Correct. We need to multiply it by three because a particular row. This will have three rows, correct? And there are three boxes in this rows, correct? So we'll have to multiply it by three as well, correct? Because we need to go on to this particular column now. So because all these rows are covered here, right? All these rows are covered here. So all the columns will be covered here as well, correct? So if I do, let's say if I want to calculate this particular index, which is like four zero four cross zero, then four by three will represent what one one into three one into three will be equal to what three plus zero because this will be zero by three column is zero, right? So zero by three will be what? Zero. So this will represent my which box? Box number third. Now this, if you'll check for this one, this is row number seven, and this is column number eight. So seven by three is equal to what? Two. Two into three is equal to what? Six. Six plus this is column number seven. So seven by three is again two. So six plus two is eight. So this represents my eighth eighth number box. Let me write the expression. And please ask question if you have any. Once I'll write the expression. So box num equal to what we'll do? Box num equal to row num by three. Row num by three into three plus column num by three. Three. Correct. 
yes i'll stop here for a minute try to understand this expression and if you have any doubts please ask any one of you any doubt here is this clear to everyone how we are calculating the box number yeah no can you explain, explain okay. for one one more see how many rows we have total we have nine rows correct now first three row, uh, rows represent what first three row represent my one and two and three box correct the next three rows represent my fourth fifth and sixth box and next three rows represent my seventh eighth and ninth box now we are doing zero based indexing so zero one two first three rows next three rows will be 3 4 5 next three rows will be 6 7 8 correct similarly column will be what 1 4 and sorry 0 3 and 6 1 4 and 7 2 5 and 8 correct now how to come up with this expression so take any index let's take this index so this is what which index this is fourth row and the column number is 0 1 2 3 4 4 correct so okay this we were taking right so this is my third row and the column is what 0 1 2 3 4 4 the column number is four, row number is 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 row row 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 so by three is what three by three is one, correct so that means that we have crossed all the three rows that means that we are on the next row now that's why it is coming one otherwise it would have come zero right because we are dividing it by three but because it's the fourth row that means that we have already covered all the three boxes which were present here that's why we are multiplying it by 3 so what we are doing row num by 3 into 3 correct why we are doing row num by 3 into 3 why can't we take directly row num because we are taking the integer value so if we we'll do row num by 3 into 3 then that would give us 4 sorry row num into 3 by 3 that will give us 4 because 3 and 3 will cancel but what we want is this this should be your zero based indexing so that's why what we are doing is 4 by 3 that is 1 that is equal to 1 and we because that is the fourth row now we know that we already would have crossed the three boxes so we are multiplying it by 3 so 4 by 4 by 3 into 3 now we need to create the with the help of the column we need to predict the box the box number in that particular column with the help of the column where we are reaching so this column index is what 5 so we will simply do what plus 5 by 3 so 5 by 3 is what 5 by 3 represents 1 again so okay wait 5 by 3 represents 1 again so 0 1 this should 2, be 4 3, by 3 right this would be 0 1 2 3 yeah 4 by 3 4 by 3 will be 1 correct so that will again represent what one so what will happen here this will become what uh four uh sorry 3 by 3 into 3 plus 4 by 3 so 3 by 3 is 1 1 into 3 is 3 3 plus 1 is 4 so if you'll count the box number 0 1 2 3 4 this is the fourth box number is it clear now yes okay so we cool. found so out the box number right now we have found out the box number row number and column number okay now we need to, we know the value correct so what we know is for that row number and the value we this represents int value so now what we'll get int value equal to what we have that will be equal to your board of i comma j minus this why why we are doing this can anyone tell me why we are doing minus of this uh, to subtract the ascii value from that and it will give you uh, basically you are integer converting character value. to integer here yeah exactly so these are the characters given to you so what we are trying to do we are trying to get the integer value by subtracting this particular character so 7 minus 7 will give me 7 ascii minus 0 ascii will give me 7 because ascii's are ascii's from 0 to 10 are in the 0 to 9 are in the sequence correct so that's why this will give me the value correct any questions or any doubt so far okay now what is our next step 
we need to do what we need to increment this value in this row now so which is, what is our uh, what is our row column so that is rows so we'll go to rows what is the index index is our row now correct so we'll go to row now correct and where we have to put this value we have to do go to this particular index correct and do equal plus plus correct did you understand this part so initially everything will be zero so what we are trying to do we are trying to put the count on this correct so what this represents my row index so what we have to we have to increment this particular value at our row index correct because this is the value in that row right so let's take an example let's say we have 5 so for the 5 in the 0th 0th if let's say we have just one row then what you would have done in case of hash arrays you would have gone to the fifth index and you would have put the count as one so that is what we are trying to do so this is my what row number is zero so we have the row number so this is my row number which is i which is zero right now and what is the value value is we have got the value from here so value is five so what we are trying to do at the fifth index of this particular matrix we are trying to put the we are doing trying to do plus plus so everything is zero right now similarly what we we'll have to do we we'll have to do calls of value call num why value it should be call num right value plus plus correct similarly what we we'll have to do we we'll have to do box 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 boxes of what boxes of box num of value plus plus correct and one thing one other condition which we need to check here is if board of board of ij is not equal to what dot because dots are given to you right so we need to check if these are not equal to dot then only we have to do apply these conditions okay any question so far but we can uh, like you are incrementing the counts here right you can just uh, i mean uh, we can return early as uh, as early as possible right i mean as soon as we find there is uh, already one or something stored in any of these rows calls or boxes right we can return correct, false correct 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 yes you can do that as well what i was trying to do is i was just trying to make it simple for now you okay. can do that as well that is not a problem at all what you can do is now you can check if rows of ronam or ronam of value is greater than 1 or or either of them is fine you are also correct it's better to return as early as possible that is what is preferred but you can write this as well yeah this is cleaner i mean looks cleaner and yeah. yes that's why right. so what you can do is this is greater than 1 then what we can do simply return what this or this or this that means false. that we have found a duplicate somewhere mm -hmm. so what we need to return what false from here otherwise what we can do after everything is completed let's remove this row as well yeah so we were here and yeah so this is what we were implementing and we need to return bool so we will return true from here okay yes questions now any one of you any questions yeah uh, since can, can, yes since uh, you have initialized the array so it will be garbage value right since it is an array i mean what you have to make it do? yeah yeah you can do that uh, but i mean what we can do is we can actually declare a variables global variables and then you can handle and it you can use java uh, either of them is fine i think should be fine it's a very simple small thing yeah it won't i mean correct yeah you are correct we we'll we can do this so what you can do is row of i say okay we have to do it till 10 right so what we'll do is i is equal to 0 to 9 and j is less than 0 to 10 
or we can do from 1 to 10 as well. That's 10 as well is equal to 0. Rows of i j equal to 0. Calls of i j equal to 0. Yeah, can anyone tell me what will be the complexity of this? M by N, whatever is like you are uh, basically checking it only uh -huh. once, right? So M by N. Yeah, it's basically 9, nine square, N square. Correct, because we are just iterating through this row and this. Okay, now any, any other questions you have in this one? In the box number logic calculation, uh, what if we do uh, multiply the column number by three into three? Column by three into three. So then you have to count column like this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not a problem. It should be fine, but you are counting columns like this then. Okay, so that can also be done. So if oh. you'll try that, then the column will be zero, one, I mean, the boxes will be zero, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as long as you have the same logic, everyone, that should work fine. You can do that as well. It's just that your column will be count like the, this will represent the first box, this will represent the second box, this will represent the third box. Correct. Understood? Okay. Sure. Yeah. That won't change your solution. That won't change anything. It's it's sure. just the way you are considering. I mean, as long as you are considering this as one box, it should be one fine. box, that is fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? So let's try to run the code and see if it works fine. Uh, it should work fine. I don't see any problem with the code. So it is accepted. So cool. So this is the solution for validation. So like, I mean, this is a very, very simple question, not a very simple question, but a very famous question and asked in the interviews. And the logic which we have learned here is how to count the boxes and how can we use the hash. Now, instead of using the concept of array, we can use a hash map or set as everyone has proposed earlier. Uh, it's easier to explain the code with the help of arrays. That's why I went to use hash or, uh, you know, sets, but you can very well use the hash as well as set here. There is no restriction on that. Okay. The complexity won't change. It will remain exactly the same complexity. Uh, like the space might change a bit because you might not actually initialize everything in the set and hash. So space complexity will change, but the worst case will be same. Uh, the time complexity will remain same in case of hash or set or arrays. Okay. Cool. Any other question you have before I move forward to the next question? What is it? Cool. So it's nothing. So representation of re representation of hash in an array. So basically the indexes of the array represent a hash. That's it. Okay. So this will be so covered. Exactly. Or... They hold a, a unique value in each index. Not necessarily. I'm not saying it's a hash map. Hash is a concept, okay. right? Hash is a concept where you actually put the value based on some uh hashing function so hashing function will become your size yeah. of the array here correct so if you do something percentage of that that will give you the value or the index of the hashing function that okay. will represent your key your key is the index here okay. correct i haven't mentioned that we are using hash map hash map is a okay. unique key so key is keys are anyways unique right keys will be unique and there is no concept of unique okay. values in hash map as well so but it's not right to say hash map because there are a bunch of other things in hash map, map like a bucket factor, uh, the, the way it grows, then you have a collision. Uh, you might not face all this yeah. in a hash. Act. So all these things will be covered in this course or how it is, I mean. So you, so this is the ad hoc class. I guess you guys have joined from the meetups, right? Yeah, it's a my first class. Sorry. So, so I mean, see, these are all ad hoc classes. Uh, I'm not taking any, I mean, this is not specific to any topic, but in each of these classes, we'll try to learn some concepts and uh, 
you know you can actually implement those in your interviews we are trying to take some of the advanced questions which are very famous and are asked uh, very actively in the interviews like i uh, asked like a lot of times so we are trying to solve similar kind of pat- uh, like patterns of those questions and if, like we have classes on every saturday or like uh, every weekend either on saturday or sunday this time it was scheduled on monday and uh, we try to solve the question like some random questions from which were asked in some of the interviews okay so i mean uh, i mean i forgot to introduce myself so i mean i have the i have experience of uh, so i mean i am currently working at google and i have the experience to interview with almost all the big tech companies so i mean i actually take these classes just to you know walk people through the advanced data structures and algorithms which are actively asked in the interviews and i have taken more than 50 plus interviews so far within google itself so yeah i mean it's just a ad hoc class it, it, there is no specific course uh, for these classes okay so yeah we'll jump on to the next question uh, like i think three or i think two folks actually requested me to take this question sometime uh, uh and uh yeah i mean we can actually go through this question it's an interesting question and actually again this can be broken down into multiple problems and like we'll try to see how can we solve this particular problem uh so let's try to understand the question first and if you have any doubts uh you can actually ask me while we are going through the question and then we'll try to come up with a solution for this particular problem so basically a 2d character array is given so okay before i move on to the second question any doubts on the first one i can wait for a couple of minutes if you want uh and if you want i mean if you have any doubts okay looks like it is clear to everyone so i'll jump on to the next question so you are given a 2d character array denoting forest of length m n and breadth m in the matrix dot denotes barren land and star denotes tree you are you are given q questions in each question you are given integer k and you have to determine the number of unique squares of sides less than or equal to k which contain only trees so okay let's try to under, understand this question with the help of an example so let's say there is a four cross four matrix given to you and which is this and each of the dots represent a barren land that means that there is no tree on that particular land and each star represents a uh, a tree now what is the question is that you need to there are q queries given to you there are some questions given to you and you you can actually form the uh, form the squares with the help of these trees so this can be a 2 cross 2 uh, land of 2 cross 2 where which contains all the trees similarly these this is again a land of 2 cross 2 square which contains trees everywhere and then you have another land of 3 cross 3 which contains all the uh, all the trees so the question is basically uh, you are given a integer k and you have to determine the number of unique squares of size less than or equal to k so you need to find find out the unique number of squares of the size k so of the size less than or equal to k now let's see the let's see one of this example so let's say there are three queries given to you so q represents your the number of questions and k represents the size of the uh, square which you need to for when which you need to return the answer so for size size 1 how many so 1 cross 1 square so all the unique star which we have uh, will form the square of size 1 cross 1 so how many squares are there so 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 1 10 plus 1 11 plus 1 12 so we have total number of 12 squares present here with side uh, square of side 1 now with square of side 2 so this can be one unique square correct then this can be another unique square then this can be another unique square and the last one can be another unique square so there are four unique square uh, like that which contains all the trees so your answer for the number of squares with side 2 will be 4 and what in the question it is given to you that you need to tell the unique number of squares of side less than of or equal to k so that will become 12 plus 4 that is equal to 
Now the third query is you need to tell all the squares of size three. So there are there is only one square of size three, which is three cross three. This one, this part, this one. So basically, there is only one square like that. But the total number of square, which is which are less than equal to which are of the size less than equal to three, are twelve plus four plus one, which is equal to seventy. So your answer would be seventy in this case. So I would stop here and uh, uh, allow you people to ask questions if you have uh, uh, doubts in understanding the problem, and then uh, I'll give you guys some time to you know think about the solution as well for the for this particular problem. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, please go through the question once by yourself and ask if you have any doubt. So I guess uh, there are similar problems to this as well, right? The island uh, problem and all. Is it similar to this problem as well? I mean, there are a lot of island-based problems as well. I mean, yeah, I mean. Some of the problems can be similar to this one, but okay. I'm not sure we are talking of which particular problem. So I mean, but until unless I don't see the question, right? You have to find uh, the number of islands. I'm uh, not. Very oh, sure. that's a different question altogether. Okay. That's a different okay. question. Okay. There, it's a cons. Uh, that's that's. I don't know. I I think I have taken that question some time back, but I don't remember. But that's a question of connected components. Connected components. Where you know you need to find the you need like the number of islands present in the grid, on the matrix. Okay. Uh, and like all if 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 the numbers are so basically if it is not water and water is represented by represented by dots and all the other land is represented by some star and if there is no connectivity between two star stars it is come. it is considered as an isolated island so basically you need to tell the number of islands which are present in the grid okay. or matrix that's a that's a question of connected components if you want i can take that uh in in one of the classes going forward uh, that's a question of graph with connected components cool yeah so any one of you any solution in mind yeah so what we can do is like uh, we will try to find at each index the maximum uh, square we can make it and okay once we suppose uh, we can find suppose a square of 1 in the very first row mm -hmm. we will keep on updating mm -hmm. the count on hash and at the moment we will get the square of size 2 it means that obviously size 1 is also possible so we will update the size of 1 in the hash and 2 as well and the moment we get the size of 3 which is we will be getting at the end then we will update for count 2 and for count count 1 as well then at the end we will just show it like 1 2 3 the count we will all the count of square one length 2 and 3 side your solution is good actually uh, can you try to optimize it so try to think about the complexity first and like with whatever solution you have proposed mm -hmm. and then after that uh, like once you come up with the uh, complexity of that uh, then try to optimize it as well. okay okay yes any other proposal will we, are we um, i mean this looks like straight forward dp i mean not straight forward i mean this looks like dp as in uh, i think we'll be calculating the values again and again or something of that sort i see the optimal substructure property Uh, I'm not very sure about the overlapping sub problems here. Uh, I mean, you can say it's a dynamic programming uh, DP question. Uh, it depends how you solve it, but I mean, you can actually you know put it in different buckets again. So, okay. I mean, you can call it as a pre-processing question with dynamic programming. Okay. But like the ultimate goal is to come up with a solution, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a DP question or not. Like if you have a solution, go ahead and uh, like try to explain that.
Yes, any one of you? Okay, I'll wait for another two, three minutes. Think about the solution. Uh, you people can see my screen, right? No. Oh, my screen is not visible. So, uh, okay. Just a second. So, so, like, did you understand the question? Like, was it visible when I was explaining the question? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Cool. Okay, yes. Like is, is anyone still like, do you need more time or should I start uh, explaining the solution? If anyone is attempting, let me know. I can actually wait for another few minutes. Okay. Uh, looks like uh, we can actually jump onto the solution. So let's try to break this this problem to a simpler problem. Okay. Let's say if I give you a question that this is given to you, and you need to tell me the number of the maximum size of the square which you can create from the uh, given uh, trees in barren land. Then how you will solve this problem? Let's try to write something here so that. Okay, so let's say I'll represent, um, okay, dot star, dot and comma. Okay, I don't know, dot star, dot, let's copy this part. So you can see clearly that the maximum size of the square is three here, right? Three cross three square is possible. So the area which is possible is three square which is equal to nine. Okay. But I mean, the maximum uh, square of the size side three is possible with the given question. Right? If I actually change this like this, then what will be your answer? It will still remain three. Let's change it a bit more. So you have this, you have this, you have this, you have this. What will be your answer now? Still three, I mean three cross four or three, if you want to. But square, square, it should square be a square. So it's again a three. Yeah. So let's try to fill some data with the help of uh, the, the details which we have. So see with the, Help of one side, you can create an add a square of size one with dot zero, with dot zero, with one, one, with one, one. Now, with this, you can create zero. Now, with this, you can create a square of size one because this is dot, this is dot, so definitely you can't have square of size two. Now, if you come here again, this will be one. Why one? Although this is one, 
and there is a star here but there is no star here and here so you can't create this now you come here again it will remain one because there is a star here there is a star here but there is no star here so it can't be a square of size 2 cross 2 once you come here then this will be square of size 2 uh, how we are doing it basically if you'll see in the diagonal direction there is one star upward one star on the left side there are four star but uh, again the one which you can consider is this right because i mean you can't create a square i mean you can't create even if it is four here you can't create the square of size uh, more than one here correct or oh, basically more than two here because this is one correct so again the square of the size of the square from this particular point will again remain two correct now if you come here this will be your one correct because it's at the end sorry it's at the end and then you have one star only now here at this point again it will be one correct again it will be one at this point it will become what two so here because this was one one and one one and this is also a star this will become two now similarly if you go next what will be the size of the square here it will it the maximum size possible again is what two, two. correct two why two because this one is star correct uh, this one is dot as well as this one is also dot so definitely you can't create a square of size three so and if you will see from all the parameters the minimum is one everywhere so minimum of this this and this is one plus one this will give you two and what will be the square size here it will again remain two. now you go down here this will become one this will become what one one and one so this will become what two now this is two one and two so this will become what again Two. So you can't create a square of size more than two here if you see from this particular index as well, from the third index as well, from this index as well. But as soon as you come here, as you come back, what two, two and two? That means that there is a square possible of size two from here, from here as well as from here. That means that you can create a square of size three here. So that's mm -hmm. why this will become what two plus one. Two. Similarly, three two two the minimum is two, so this will become plus one three. So maximum size square possible in this is three. Any questions so far or any doubts you have till here? Any one of you. Let's say this is star. Then what will be your what this will become? If this is star, uh, sorry dot, then this will become what C. Correct because that's a barren land. So any doubts here so far? Okay. Now C. If you can create a square of size three from here, you can definitely from this particular this particular cell you can also create a square of size two, as well as you can create a square of size one, correct? For this particular cell. So for this cell, we are going up in an upward direction. We are trying to check if we can create a square from this cell going upwards. So maximum square we can create going upwards from this cell is three, of size three. So basically. Can we say that we can also create a square of size two for sure and size for uh, size of one as well for sure from this particular cell? Yes. Is that part clear to everyone? Yeah. Any doubts you have so far? Any questions? Any one of you? Please try to understand this and ask questions if you have. Because a similar question was asked to me, in like, I I can't take the name of the companies, but like. Couple of big companies. So this is a very famous problem, and like I've seen this question appearing in multiple ways in different interview companies. If you try, and this is a very very easy concept. Try to understand it. If you'll understand it completely, it will become much more easier for you to solve the, these things, these kind of questions going forward. Okay. So can I assume that there is no doubt in this particular question? Uh, I mean, no doubt so far till here. Whatever we have, we have, we have understood. Okay. Now what we can do is so see again. What we need to do is we need to calculate. So once we create a similar array, we will know that how many, how many uh, squares can be created from this particular index of what size. So there can be two squares of size one and two. There can be three squares of size one, size two, and size three. Now. when you are actually putting this value 
So someone mentioned that what we can do, we know that this is of size three, correct? So you can create an uh, a square of size one and two and three from this index. So when we are actually updating the value, what we can do is from we can run a loop and we can maintain a hash array again of size what? So maximum square size possible as per the question is thousand because n cross m is thousand. So maximum square size possible is thousand. So we can create an array of size 1001. Correct. And what we will keep, this is again a hash array where index represent your key and you will maintain the count of size one or size two or size three in this hash array. So what we'll do is whenever we see that the hash array is of size three, what we can do is we can simply run a loop for int i is equal to zero. I is less than whatever size we have got so far. So let's say this is the size we have got size I plus plus. What we can do, we can write a hash array of I plus plus. We are just incrementing the count here. Okay, so let's try to write the code for, for, for this first and then we'll try to optimize it. So that at least it will be clear to everyone whatever we have understood so far. So let's say we have to fill a particular function. So let's say what is the function given to us? They are doing something. I don't know how to run this code, but what I'll try to do is I'll copy paste this. Let's see if there is any function given in G++. Uh, I don't know. Okay. What we'll do is we'll try to fill this function, whatever input is there. And okay. we'll try to write the code by ourselves. So let's say we have, uh, we have to return the integer and then we have, yeah. So we have what function we need to fill. We need to fill uh, find queries. Sorry, answer queries. This is the function which you need to fill and queries. Okay, and we are taking the input of the query and returning the value for, from here. But before that, what do we need to do? We need to do the pre computation. So, can we call it as pre compute? So, we'll call, we'll create and we'll have void pre compute as our function name. And what we'll try to get, we'll try to get uh, the num which we have n cross m. So we'll have an array. So let's say the input array is given to you like this. And forest or whatever they are calling it is, I don't know, forest only. So we have, where is my code? Yeah, forest of size what? 1001 cross 1001. That is the maximum size possible. So this is, given as the input to us. Now what we need to do is we need to have the pre computation array, right? So int what we'll do is count square. It's a global variable so automatically initialized to zero. Okay. Now what we are doing we are performing the pre compute operation. So what we'll do we'll start from int i is equal to zero. I is less than what? we have let's say n cross m. So int n we got, int m we got. So int i is less than n, i plus plus, and then we have what? For int j is equal to zero, j is less than m and j plus plus. So this represents my row and column. And then what we are to do, trying to do? So we are trying to count the square, okay? So if, i double equal to zero or or j double equal to zero. That means that this is my first index. Then what we need to do is we just need to check if, if what forest of i j is equal equal to what star. If that is the case, then what we need to do? Good we one. just need to Put one there. So what is count square of ij will become equal to one. Correct. If this is not the case, then what we need to do? We need to find the min. So int. So what will your count square become? Count square. So we just need to compute it only if it is 
star right so we'll write the similar condition here if this is the case then what we need to do we need to do count square of ij equal to equal to min of what count square of i minus 1j i minus 1 and i minus 1 minus 1 j comma min of i j minus 1 comma count of i minus 1 j minus 1 minus let's one. try to write it in a better way so that you understand okay so we'll try to get the min of this all these three so this will give me the count and then what we have to do after we have computed this min i have to do plus 1 in this so after you compute this we simply do plus 1 in this because this will be the size so if it is 0 then this will become 1 correct so is this much part clear to everyone or you have any questions uh, why did you initialize the arrays like uh, the count square arrays and everything 2001 or something right uh, okay so because m and n cross m is given to you is 1000 right no, you could have just used m i mean whatever is given in the input right you could just say m plus 1 and n plus 1 in that case no you can do that as well okay. see i have declared a global variable you can actually have a local variables and you can do that as well okay cool. not a problem but like global variable like if we try to write another method which is like this answer queries you can directly use the global variable you don't need to pass this okay. local variables and you don't need to initialize the local variables uh, global variables it is automatically initialized to zero mm -hmm. so bunch of advantages but like if you ask me if i would have written this code in the industry then maybe i would have uh, used it as a local variable it doesn't i mean it uh, it should not be a part of the global variable in that case but we are just writing the code here so it, it's fine if even if you have if you create a global variable in this case Okay. Yeah. So interviewer might ask you this question, like why not create a local variable and you can actually tell him what are the advantages and disadvantages and then they will consider that. Okay. Yes. Any other questions or any other doubt? Okay, cool. So this part is clear to everyone, right? Now, once we know that this is my count, now what I need to do is actually once this for loop is completed, what we are trying to do is we will as discussed we will increment the count from for the hash array so what we'll have we can have int uh, count 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 uh, count square count hash count hash we can have or this will be of size thousand and one so what we'll do is for end i is equal to zero i is less than count of square of i j correct what i'll do i plus plus oh i can't use i and j i need to use something else so k is equal to zero k is less than count square k plus plus what will i do i will increment the count of this by one till count square of ij less than equal to count square of ij and this should be equal to one right because we are starting from the first well because the minimum size of of the square for which we are considering is equal to one so we'll do this and then what we'll do we'll say do count of hash of k plus plus now once this is computed now you have the count of hash of k plus plus. So you have the count of hash. Now what you can do is you can, whenever a query is coming, so you know the k for which you need to return the answer. If k is equal to zero, the answer will be zero. If k equal to one, then answer will be 12. k equal to two, automatically the answer will become 16. k equal to three, answer will become 17. Now, is there a way we can actually reduce this particular size? So what is the current complexity? Can anyone tell me what is the current complexity? 
considering i j k what is the current complexity of your algorithm any one of you so uh, every i j uh, we are like so let's say it is m by m i'm right and it is m and k something yeah so that can be in k can be also 1001 1001 so overall it became what n into m into k which is equal to n cube yeah correct and n cube is like 10 to the power 9 in our case and the time limit is given to you is 1.39 which won't be executed in 1.39 hmm. so it should be around 10 to the power 7 10 to the power 8 to for this to be 10 to the power 7 to for this to be completed within this time limit okay okay so what we are trying to do now how can we optimize this so this much is clear to everyone right how this solution will work is that part clear to everyone and answer queries you just need to know the index right so you know you have already computed everything for that particular index you just need to return the value any questions you have so far in this this particular solution so can i assume that there are there are no doubts as of now okay great now how to reduce this complexity so see what we can okay instead of writing this can i do simply this count of hash of what count of hash of count of square count of count square of ij plus plus so what it will do so what it will do it will just increment the value at of so basically it will find how many threes are there how many twos are there how many ones are there and put that in the count account hash is that clear to everyone okay any doubt in this particular statement correct any doubts here yeah can you please repeat i didn't get that so basically what we are doing is we are okay so count square is represent what what Let, let's simplify it so int count square of ij what count square of ij represent int size max size of max size square correct correct that that is represented by count ij do you agree yes yes if i do count of square count of hash and i'll put max size square here then it will it's like an array and what we are doing we are saying that of this size we uh, we, we are counting the number of uh the number of squares which can be formed for a particular size now correct like we we yes. will come what will happen here like the count of uh count hash of 3 will be equal to what 1 because yeah. you can form only one square of size 3 Yes. For two, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. For one, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. So can I? So for for one, it will be what? One. Okay, I'll write it here. So for one, it will be what? Nine. For two, what will be the count? One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. And for three, what will be the count? One will be the count for three. Is that correct? Yes. Any doubt so far? Now, because I have computed this, so once everything is finished, after that, can I do this? Can I say that after this is finished, for loop, can I write for int i is equal to Uh, 1001 i is less than equal to 0 i is greater than equal to 0 i minus minus and do what or i will start from 999 maybe okay and what i'll do is count hash Of i is equal to count hash 
of i plus count hash of i plus one. Let's try to understand this with the help of example. So what I'm trying to count, I'm trying to call total number of squares which are possible with one. So the ones which are possible with three are possible with one and two both. The ones which are possible with two are possible with one as well. Correct. So what I'm doing is so with size two, how many squares can be possible? Six are already there, and this square is also possible because we computed for three, right? But we can create a square of size two as well here. So what I'm doing, I'll do one plus six. So this will become what seven. Similarly, when I come to one, all the ones which are from two and three can be created, can be considered as as a square of size one as well. Mm -hmm. Correct. So what I'll do is I'm doing seven plus nine. I'll do sixteen. So the number of squares with size one will become what sixteen. The number of size squares with size two will become what seven. The number of squares with size three will become what. So we have computed this. Now the overall complexity will become what? This will be my n square, and this will be n. So overall complexity reduced to what? Order of n square. Is this part clear to everyone? Now I am doing this. Yeah. Clear to everyone? Yes. Or you have any doubts? No doubt, right? I mean, I can wait and try to explain it again if you have any doubt. Please ask questions if you have any doubts. How did you get the intuition for this problem? I mean, uh, as a general, I mean, not related to this problem, right? Uh, because let's say uh -huh. somebody gets uh, this kind of problem. I mean, somebody seeing the, this kind of uh, problem for the first time. So, uh, does practice? Uh, if you have already practiced, yes, practice, right? I mean, so yes, yes, yeah. I mean, see, like as long as See, I mean, I told you, right? I have seen similar question. I read this question for the first time, and I don't know the solution they might have proposed might be very different from my solution. I don't. I haven't seen the solution as well. Maybe after I will write the code for this, we can go through the editorial as well. I'm not sure what exactly the solution they have proposed. It can be a different solution altogether. My ultimate aim was to solve it under n square or under n square login. Correct. That's what I got it from the. uh query uh, from the input input constraint given to me and then i started thinking about the solution and then it uh, clicked me that okay i need to count the uh, i need to count so i need to count the squares once i know that i need to count the squares then i need to somehow reduce the complexity how can i reduce the complexity because i have already pre computed for the squares of size 3 we can make a square of size 2 and size 1 as uh, as well with the help of that that's why i just count it and then from the last to the first index run a Uh, run run a summation uh, uh, summation iteration and just add the two indexes uh, like the one on which you are standing and the next one because next one will contain all the further indexes as well so here exactly so this is here actually i'm using the property of you know uh, overlap overlapping sub problems and uh, uh, like i won't say this is dp dp you can call it as dp if you want uh, mm -hmm. i mean it depends but but there are as such i mean yeah there are overlapping sub problems as well here or optimal sub structures as well here but this is more like a pre computation yeah. here you are actually using the dp concept uh, uh, and like this the intuition i mean yeah that comes with practice only that is the only way you know to okay. uh, you, you know solve these questions but like now you have seen us seen this particular question right so if any similar question of a pattern will come then you will be able to mostly crack that particular problem so like one person was able to propose the solution but the solution and they proposed a very similar solution what what i have have done previously but they didn't propose the optimal one because see n cube won't execute here n cube will give you tl in this case you have to solve it with under n square for sure or maybe n square log n might work so that's why i mean i was thinking about the solution and it just clicked me that actually i have already computed for 3 so why why can't we use use that uh computation to calculate it for 2 as well if i've already computed for 2 then why can't i use it for 1 as well so like this is like a dp problem again right if you have already computed for some number you just use that to calculate for the next numbers 
but here it's in the reverse order you are starting from the end and coming uh, coming backward and that's what i'm trying to do and once i've calculated this i just need to answer the queries now so the queries will be very straightforward whatever case sent whatever q is given to you or whatever k is given to you for that k you just need to query this particular count hash and return the value so your answer query will become very straightforward and k if it is so you need to return return count hash of k that's it okay i mean i don't know uh, what exactly the solution they have proposed maybe if we we'll have time we'll, we can go through it but try to understand this solution first and then you can go on to the editorial and try to see what what is the solution they have cool any doubts in this one uh prakar uh, yes just to, uh, explain again how you calculated 1 2 3 like that uh, for that okay. matter you you mean this one this part a uh, pre computation mean like how Yeah, this yeah. one yeah yeah okay see it's very very easy so see we are standing here right let's say this is you are standing here right now so if you look at left look at top and look at diagonal group diagonal so you can clearly see that you can't create an array of size oh sorry square of size 1 size 2 because this is dot this is also dot correct 2 mm -hmm. cross 2 we can't so create yeah we can't create so the maximum we can create is 1 correct mm. similarly the maximum we can create here is also one similarly mm. the maximum here also we can create is one correct you can't create mm -hmm. more than one here correct because this is dot diagonal Now, is if dot i'm coming yes if i'm coming here i know that i can create a square of one here with one here and one here correct one mm. here means that i can't create of two two if i mm. would have created then this would have become two right but yeah. see so that means that there is already a square of size one 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 correct so if i add another one at this particular index then can i create a square of size 2 you can create a square of size 2 because this is also one 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 and this will also become one correct now come on to this particular problem where you are here correct mm. so this one from here you can clearly see that you can create a square of size 2 from here from yes. this index correct yes. mm. similarly you can create an index of size sorry let's calculate for this one so for this one as well you can create a size of 2 correct yes but for 3 you need you need 2 in this diagonal direction as well correct yes the last one the last topmost diagonal is uh, dot so topmost diagonal is dot so you mm -hmm. can create a square of size 2 definitely yeah so the maximum you can create was one here mm. correct now even if this is 2 and this is 2 you can create a square of size 3 right because yes. this was one only so mm. what i am doing is i am just taking the min of this this and this and whatever okay. is my min i know that i can create a I, because this is this i know for sure is not zero this i know like i am i am taking the min and if i mm. do min plus 1 that means that i have at least those many dots in upward direction leftward direction and diagonal direction correct mm hmm so that's why i can call that i can say that this we can create a square of size 2 from here as well mm hmm now if i come here i know that there are two dots present on the diagonal direction like this two yeah. dots present in the upper direction two dots present in the left direction now if two dots are present in the diagonal here two dots will be present in this and this direction as well right so mm -hmm. all these dots are present and everything is there like these are all the dots mm -hmm. correct oh sorry stars not the stars, dots sorry huh. so I, yeah so i can create a square of size 3 because from i can see that on the diagonal one i can create as of size 2 from here is where i can create of size 2 from here also i can create of size 2 there are over overlapping points here but overall the points which we have to cover are covered with the help of all these three indexes correct yeah to create a square of size 3 so what if we take the minimum of all these three that will become we are 2 and if i do 2 plus 1 that will give you 3 3 is that clear now yeah any other doubts you have no thanks cool. and thanks for asking thanks for asking this question i'm not sure if it it was clear to everyone or not but yeah thanks for asking yeah if you still have any doubt please ask i can explain it to you again okay cool and you understood this this part as well right 
like i am not sure who asked the question right now but you understood this part as well right uh, yeah okay like what exactly i'm trying to do here how i am so i've already calculated for 3 so for 3 it will be up updated first that i am going in the reverse direction why am i going in the reverse direction because when i'm co i have computed for 4 then then only i should compute it for 3 because for 4 i need to compare let's say we have squares of size 1 2 3 4 5 3 4 5 6 so until and unless i don't compute it for 5 because squares with 5 will contain the squares of size 5 as well as of size 6 from the size 6 correct so until and unless i don't compute for 5 i can't compute for 4 so that's why i'm going in the reverse direction so now when i am computing for 5 it will include all the squares with size 5 and size 6 correct the count of squares of size 5 and size 6 that will be stored as 5 now for 4 all like i need to compute for 5 and 6 both so instead of writing that for loop what i am doing is in the reverse direction when i am computing i am using the pre computation or dynamic programming you can say uh, like overlapping sub problems or sub structures optimal sub structures and i am just computing it for the complete array altogether so that part is all also clear to everyone right how this became 16 so 9 plus 6 is 15 only but we need to consider this one as well right so when i computed for 2 i automatically made it 7 so when i am computing it for 1 i am doing 9 plus 7 16 so let's say you have this as well let's say you have 4 for 4 your count is 5 for 5 your count is let's say 0 i'm just giving you an example for 6 let's say your count is equal to Eight. So, how many squares which will be created with the size uh, six that will be equal to eight only? With the size five, that will become what? Zero plus eight, which will be equal to eight. With the size four, that will become five plus eight, that will be equal to thirteen. With the size three, thirteen plus one, which will be equal to fourteen. With the size two, six plus fourteen, which will be equal to twenty. And with the size one, twenty plus nine, that will be equal to twenty. Okay, so that that is also clear to everyone, right? So the test case was wrong, right? You cannot have five zero; otherwise, you could not have taken min plus one. Yeah, five yeah. Five have this some. Is, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, it should be more than this for sure. So yeah, I mean, it was. I'm just trying to explain you how exactly this should work. It should be always less than the number. So I mean, this is also not correct. You can't have five squares of size four if you have only one square of size three. So this number should always be decreasing. Correct? Understood, right? Yeah. I mean, I was just trying to explain what exactly okay. I'm trying to do here in this. Correct? Yeah. Don't consider this part. Uh, let's remove it. But I hope you understood what I'm trying to do. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we can try to write the code. You can try to write the code by yourself. I can share this much part to you, and you can try it on your own. This is open to all. I can ping you the link of this question and try to write the solution by your own. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the next class, which will have. Uh, yes, I mean, I'll have to write int main and everything. If you want, if we'll have time, we can actually do that. Or if you want, we can go to the editorial try to understand the solution. Whatever you want, I'm fine with both. I've pinged you the code as well as uh, the question. Yeah, there might be some minor syntax errors, but uh, like mostly it should it should work fine. Yeah. So no questions, right? So let's see the. So do you want me to write the code, or should I should we move on to the editorial? Because you just need to fill the main function now. I think you should see the tutorial to see how. Okay, let's see what they are doing. So in this problem, first of all, determine the 2D summation array of such that the summation of an 2D array can be determined in order of first. Now, corresponding to every index in the 2D array, check for every valid square whether it is full of trees or not using binary search over the length of the square. What does that mean? now you will get the count of the squares of of every side in the matrix now calculate the summation array of same now corresponding to each query uh, answer it in order of one so that this is definitely different from what we are trying to do 
uh, I didn't understand the editorial completely, but let's try to understand it again. Let's go through it. So, okay, there are no comments as well. So, and first of all, determine the 2D summation array of such that summation of any 2D array can be determined in order of one. Uh, determine the 2D summation array of such array 2D summation array such that the summation of any 2D array can be determined. I don't know what they are trying to say here. Can be determined in order of one. What summation? So maybe they are trying to say that how many squares are there now corresponding to every index in the 2D array. Check for every valid square whether it is full of trees or not using binary search over the length of the square. Oh, okay, I get it. So basically what they are trying to say is every index they are trying to perform the binary search and try to see if but why binary search check for every value so whether it is full of trees or not using binary search over the length of the square. I see. But this will be has this will have more complexity than what we have solved for. Uh, let's see their solution here, maybe. Hmm. So they are doing some scan f, and then they are doing they are replacing zeros and ones. So this will become one for them. For i is equal to one, i is less than n. For i is equal to a j, i j equal to a i j minus one plus a i j. So they are counting i less than equal to n, i plus plus, for j equal to one, j plus plus, i less than equal to one. I guess it's so time to uh, read the array similar to what you were trying to do, just that they have um, more steps. Also, uh, if you look at the uh, like. Uh, the solution that you go there is there is no need of performing the binary uh, search. I'm not sure. Bad, yeah, uh, the solution that you coded, right? I mean, if you see uh, all the cells uh, when we are filling the matrix row by row, right? The values will Correct. be in hundred order. So they are doing some kind of bullshit on um, that. Uh, okay, I, I don't know what the, they are trying to do, but values. their complexity will be more than our complexity. So maybe they are trying to solve with the n square login, and we have solved it with n square complexity. And if you want, you can go through this solution as well. And I can I, I don't I can try to understand it later on, but it looks like it is much more complex than what we have done here. It's the one which we have done is fairly, fairly simple. You just need to so they are actually doing the same computation. I think so. But they are not taking min anywhere. I'm not sure if they are doing the same computation or not. Uh, but they are computing something and then they are performing the binary search. I don't see a need of a binary search here. Uh but yeah, I mean, if you want, you can actually try to understand the solution. Maybe I don't know how to, there should be, this should be a bit, definitely need a better editorial. But yeah, I mean, I hope you understood the solution, which we, uh, we just, uh, just now wrote. So cool. So, I mean, uh, we are done with the sec two questions. I don't think I'll be able to take the third one today. Uh, because otherwise we'll run out of time. We just have like 14, 13, 14 minutes left for the day. So if you have any questions, not just regarding the questions we have, which we have seen today, anything about the preparation, you can actually ask me. Otherwise, we can actually end the meet for the day. Yeah. Cool. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah. So any questions, anything, any doubts in the solution, which you have seen? So I just wanted to ask like in generally, so if you see like uh, companies like Google, Facebook or Amazon, as per I know, like mm -hmm. Amazon mostly asks problems on trees or DP. So likewise, do you have any idea like what all companies may majorly focus on what thing like Google may be asking more on DP or tree. So likewise, I wanted to know like Amazon mainly asks tree and graph. As per I see, I mean. so so I mean it depends. It totally depends on company to company. But if you will prepare, I mean the the majority of the topics which are asked in all these interviews are uh, like graphs, trees. Uh, there might be a limited questions in Google and trees again because like most of the questions are either boil down to DP or some math mathematical question where you need to put some algorithm or a graph question. 
uh, in Google, that's how I've seen generally. And even like when I take interview, like most of the solutions or questions boils down to the DP problem or you know graph problem or with graph with a DP with some maths with some pre computation something like that. Like, but in in general, like uh, in other companies I've interviewed with, like Microsoft, Amazon, uh, or Uber or LinkedIn, I've seen that uh, like even Flipkart and you know like all the big tech companies, right? Whatever you can I mean, like. Uh, most of these companies actually ask questions which are uh, mostly on trees and th these are very straightforward questions like if you solve like 50 50 60 questions of each of these topics like from trees arrays link list stack queues graphs and you know binary search tree try try an eternal search tree i think it's good enough you know and st some questions on strings as well and then few questions on dynamic program I think it's good enough for you to, you know, appear for the interviews. But if you'll ask me any for the big tech companies, it's like for like Amazon, Microsoft, they mostly focuses on like the questions which are based out of trees and arrays. Okay. For so, Google, it's DP yeah. graphs mostly. And I mean, again, that can vary from person to person, right? I'm talking yeah. about my personal experience. Yeah. And also, so, you, yes. see, you see, like uh, we have in, in an interview, we have one hour and two question max. Is, is to be asked. So if a yes. person answer only one question correctly and second one he didn't able to answer, then what's the chances of getting through? To it, de it depends again on the person to person as well as interviewer to interviewer. So if your first question is fairly, fairly simple, then yeah, I mean, yeah, the expectation is that you should be able to solve both the questions given to you. Like sometimes there is only one question which is given in the complete interview of 45 minutes to one hour. And then if the person is able to solve that question, then it's good. I mean, and there are times I've seen where a person is unable to come on to the solution, but the, the way they have approached a particular problem, right? Based on that as well, like the, the candidates are selected or rejected. So it depends how you are approaching the problem. It's not necessary that you should always, you should be able to always come up with the solution. Uh, the way you are approaching the problem and how close, I mean, there are some open-ended problems as well, right? where yeah. you, you don't have any solution, right? Or you don't have any correct solution, I should say. There are solutions, but there is no correct solution. Or there is no wrong solution, uh, to put it in a better way. So in, in such questions, right, the general, generally the, you know, the interviewer is trying to uh, gauge a person based on their, uh, you know, approach, based on their, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the way they are actually you know, trying to take the hints and then approaching the problem or trying to come up with a solution or the way, the different ways in which they can think about a problem by changing the constraints or changing the parameters. So again, it de totally depends on person to person and interviewer to interviewer and candidate to candidate. So, yeah. but yes, in a typical interview where you have two questions of easy to medium, then the expectation is at least you should be able to write the code of one of the questions and you should be able to come up with a solution for both the questions. Yeah, and one more thing, like uh, if suppose I know that I already saw that question the interview is asking, then what should I do? Shall I directly give the, like tell him honestly, like I know the solution or what should I do I mean, in that scenario? Uh, yeah. It's very difficult to answer that question, right? It depends how you want to approach or how, what do you feel about that question? If you feel that it's a very straightforward question and I mean, you will be able to directly tell the solution and then like, and you, I mean, if, if the interviewer might change the question, uh, then you might not be able to solve it. So it depends on you, right? Like if you have seen that question and you are very much familiar with it and you feel that if you don't tell the interviewer, then the impression, it, it might give a wrong impression, then yes, you should definitely tell it to your interviewer. But if you feel that, I mean, you might have seen a similar question in past or I mean, even you have seen the question in past, but you don't know the exact solution and the way you are approaching the solution or the way you are thinking about the solution, if that seems fine or if that seems convincing to the, I mean, if you feel that will be convincing enough for the interviewer, then yes, you can actually, okay. I mean, it, it's a personal choice. I mean, yeah. uh, I would, I would prefer to actually, you know, tell the interviewer that I've similar, I've seen the similar question. And let them change or you know tweak, tweak some of the, like some of the parameters in the question, not the, the tweak the question itself instead okay. of them changing the question. So I mean I don't directly tell them that I have seen this question, I have, I have solved it because that again gives a bad impression if you are unable to solve that. So I generally tell that 
I mean, I have seen a similar question and I might be able to solve it quickly. And in that case, I will quickly give my solution and to tell him that I have seen a similar question. And then uh, instead of wasting more time on it, let them ask another question. So, yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, thanks. I think there are uh, no more questions. I, I, I have a, not a directly related qu uh, like, uh, question related to DS. I uh, came into this meeting today uh, from a link that was posted to one of the groups that I've joined. So like, uh, I just finished a course on uh, this Sunday. So I just wanted to uh, like keep up with the future classes that you take. So can you like, uh, let me know how I can be in touch? Uh, I'm not sure that those details can be shared uh, by Aditya Lonely. Uh, like by, I mean, Aditya can share those details. Yeah, I mean, I just But I generally take classes on Saturdays. Oh, okay. I generally take classes on Saturdays and Sundays. So I mean, either of the days. So I mean, and those are all, all those classes are ad hoc classes where, you know, I take some questions on advanced data structures or, you know, some questions on problems on system design low level design, high level design. So it depends. I mean, these, there is no fixed pattern. I'm okay. trying to like, we have taken like in last three classes, we have taken questions on uh, advanced data structures before that, or not exactly advanced data structures, but the problems which are asked in the companies like design okay. class, uh, you know, DS problems. Uh, before that okay. I was taking a few questions on, uh, you know, system design. And before that I was again taking a taught bunch of things on advanced data structures. So you can, oh, yeah, okay. you can stay in touch uh, through that. Yeah. The group, WhatsApp group, yeah. Yeah, WhatsApp okay. group, cool, cool. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, I think most of you, like most of most of the people here today might have attended one of my classes and passed. Okay. So you can stay connected through that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Nice meeting you all. Thanks for asking the questions and thanks for joining the meeting. Hope uh, you enjoyed the session and learned something out of it. Uh, I'll end up the meeting now. Could someone share the group link? I don't know which group link it is. Maybe there is someone from data structures. I'm not sure if who can share this link. I have a question. Is the meeting still uh, yeah. going? I think I was planning to quit the, I mean, end the meeting, but yeah, you can go ahead and ask a question. Thank you. So, I have uh, my, my question is a different one. So does the uh, choice of programming language matter here while studying data? Systems? I don't think so. I, it should not. As long as you're preparing for like a tech science or big tech companies, so thing uh, is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 So thing is, uh, I've been working in Scala for the couple of years, okay, like four or five years now. So like... Yeah. Uh, the way you approach a problem in in a language like that, which is a functional programming language. Correct, okay. correct, so correct. Like correct, there correct. are there are no break statements. There is no continuous statement. Continuous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I have yeah. I have seen Scala. Scala. It's like, it's not a lot. It's not it's not readable, and it's there like there is a lot of like a functional programming in Scala. Mm -hmm. So I mean, generally, someone who is taking the interview preferred that if the candidate is writing code in Java or C++ or, you know, even if they're writing pseudo code or, you know, C or even Python, right. It becomes easier for them to, you know, uh, uh, you know, understand the solution. But I mean, I, I don't think a program sh like the coding language should be a constraint for anyone or uh, to give the interviews, but like a lot of interviews, interviewers might consider that as a constraint. So I would personally suggest you to learn basics of one of the languages. And you can very easily learn to write code in C++. Like it won't take more than six days worth of effort for you to, you know, learn and start writing code in C++. It's a very simple language. You just need, you don't need to know the object oriented, you know, uh, level of, you don't need to get the object oriented level of understanding. You should know how to create the function, simple C program. And you just need to run the STL library that should be good enough to write code in C++. If you, if you are a bit more familiar with Java, then you can actually write it in Java as well. Again, you need to just know some of the, you know, containers which we have in Java and uh, how to create a class in Java and how to write a column method in Java. That's it. That is more than enough for write, to write a code in any of these languages. 
no one expect you to write the compute i mean the complete uh, you know object oriented code in the interviews generally that is not the expectation of most of the big companies okay thank you okay cool uh thanks a lot for joining uh yep i'll end the meeting now if you no one has any other question okay thanks thanks, thanks prakash